All right, let's talk about muscle fiber types. We have fast twitch and slow twitch fibers. Uh, some, f some sporting activities require more endurance. Some sporting activities require short bursts of activity, right? If we think of a power lifter, they just need a quick burst of energy. But if we think of a marathon runner, different type of muscle fibers are involved for the endurance. If we think of uh, Thanksgiving, for those that celebrate Thanksgiving and use a, a turkey as a symbol, you can think of the uh, old traditional argument of who wants the white meat and who wants the dark meat, right? This will make for interesting conversation when that time of year comes, and it'll be pretty soon, right? So when you think of the dark meat that's found in turkeys or chickens, that's typically the thigh right? And the white meat is found in the breast. Now, the reason being is chickens and turkeys are walking around. They're not using their flight wings, right? So the muscles that are used the most are going to appear darker because of the myoglobin and the hemoglobin and all the cholesterol that's in there, right? Which is good. The areas that aren't going to require much muscle contraction or mitochondria and fuel and blood and myoglobin are going to appear whiter in color. They're going to appear white. So that's the white meat. So there's more myoglobin in the thigh or the legs than there are in the wings. So the white fibers, these are fast twitch fibers because they're fast, meaning they're used for fast, quick power speed, but for a very short duration. They fatigue easily because of that accumulation of lactic acid. Now the red fibers, these are slower twitch fibers. They're slower, they have more mitochondria, more myoglobin. If there's more mitochondria, there's more ATP, more energy, it's not going to fatigue as easily. So these type of fibers are used more for endurance and even your postural muscles, like your calf muscles and your erector spinae muscles of your back. So the fast fibers contract very quickly. They're larger diameter. They have large glycogen reserves. They have few mitochondria. It's a very strong, fast contraction, but they fatigue easily. Your slower fibers are slower to contract, but they're slower to fatigue. They have smaller diameter, much more mitochondria, great oxygen supply, lots of myoglobin. Uh, there's a redder pigment and it binds to oxygen. So again, your white fibers, these are mostly your fast twitch fibers. This is your chicken breast, it's pale, it's your white meat. Your dark meat are the chicken legs, they're slower fibers, they're slower to fatigue. Okay, and we have mixed fibers, right? Humans have both red, we have white, we even have pink, it can be a combination of both. In an earlier video, we talked about the difference of hypertrophy and atrophy. When you have a nerve going to a muscle and a muscle is getting lots of activity and a muscle is contracting and you're exercising, muscles thicken or hypertrophy. Whereas if you have a pinched nerve in your neck, or a pinched nerve in your lower back or a subluxation, you're gonna have muscles getting less nerve supply in your arm and leg and muscles can atrophy. They waste away. They reduce in their size, their tone, strength, and power. So here, we're showing a postural muscle like your calf muscle compared to, let's say, one of your eye muscles. Your eye muscles, you ever wonder why, you know, they move quickly and fast, right? but they fatigue easily. You can get tired at night when you read. That's because they're, they just fatigue very easily, those muscles. When I am testing my patients, when I'm examining my patients, and I have them, and I'm checking their eye movements for smooth pursuits or rapid saccades, which is really important for the eyes to fixate on certain objects for postural stability, Many times patients have cervical disc problems and lumbar disc problems and poor tone and stability of their body because their eyes can't fixate on objects so everything becomes unstable and not one doctor has ever really checked their ability for their bodies to pursue a target or to fixate on things. So I often tell 
test my patient's eyes movements, but I need to make sure that they're breathing as they do it. Oftentimes my patients, when I'm saying, okay, look here, look here, and their eyes are going back and forth, I see their belly's not moving, they're holding their breath, and that means that they've exceeded their metabolic capacity. So I always wanna make sure that they're breathing, so I have a pulse oximeter on their finger, checking their oxygen levels as I'm treating them, and when I'm testing them. Because sometimes they fail on certain tests simply because there's depleted oxygen and then there's no energy to accomplish the tasks I want them to do. Okay, the slow twitch fibers, these are like the calf muscles, which are postural, right? You could stand for hours at end without fatiguing. Okay, um, and finishing up here on aging and muscle. So between the ages of 30 and 50 years of age, about 10% of muscle tissue is replaced by fibrous connective tissue and fat or adipose. Between 50 and 80 years of age, another 40% of muscle tissue is replaced. So what are the consequences of this? Muscle strength and flexibility decreases. Reflexes become slower. So be patient when people are driving and, you know, especially in the Northeast where I am at, people are very impatient. A light turns green and they're honking within a second. And they forget that maybe the person in front is an elderly individual whose reflexes are slow. It takes them a little bit more time to get around. Always be patient. Um, and slow oxidative fiber numbers increase. One of the last things that's really important, this is something when I examine my patient, when I greet them, it starts with a handshake. One of the things that I'm testing is hand strength but I turn over their hands, I look at the color of the nails, and I look at the muscles. I want to make sure that I don't see wasting, like hills and valleys, I call them, between the metacarpals. These are just tendons, but there's a lot of muscle between the metacarpals, and when the body starts utilizing muscles for fuel, you start to get this sarcopenia effect. So one of the things that I use in my office, I end up utilizing something that is called a, um, let me just stop the screen share here, uh, something that's called a dynamometer, right? This measures hand strength. So what ends up happening is when they squeeze this, I'll see if I could show the camera, you'll see that there's a needle, and when I squeeze the needle, you see that it moves, and it moves upward. So here's about maybe 120 pounds of crushing force, and I'm not even trying. I could get it to 180 if I'm showing off, but I'm doing it here in a very awkward position. So then we reset this, and then we have the patient squeeze again. Maybe the needle can only move this far, and then that's only 20 pounds of crushing force. And then we reset the needle. We move it into the left hand. So we're checking hand strength, which is nerve supply from the neck into the hand, but we're also measuring protein, muscles. Nerves and muscles work hand in hand. That's called a dynamometer. We can also use a dynamometer that looks like this, and we have them just use their fingers to pinch. And again, if you look here, you can see the needle move as I pinch. And when I release it, the smaller needle stays in place as the marker just a different type of dynamometer. Okay.